Let me start off by making uh, making some pre preliminary comments, and then I'll be followed by uh, Judge Adago, and Judge Adago will be followed by uh, uh, Chief Fenner, and then uh, Chief Pena, and then there may be a few others who may be offering some comments. I certainly want to acknowledge uh, Congressman Al Green from the 9th Congressional District, who's standing with us. You know, last uh, last night was uh, tragic. On, on, on many different levels, uh, and this is a very, very active investigation, and we'll probably be at it for, for quite some time uh, to, do, to determine what exactly happened. Let me just cover a few, a th a few things first. Uh, based on our latest information, you know, eight people are reported, are reported dead from, from the event last night. Uh, in terms of their ages, uh, one is 14, one is 16, two are 21 years of age, two are 23, one is 27, and one remains uh, unknown at this at this time. So a total of eight uh, that are re that are reported dead. Uh, six of the eight family members have been notified. Um, and we know that at least one is outside of Houston Harris County, reside outside of Houston Harris County. Uh, as was, uh, based on last night, uh, 25 were uh, transported to the hospital. Uh, 13 are still hospitalized, including five that are under the age of 18. Um, based on the information that we currently have, no one is, is reported missing. So zero persons are reporting missing. Four of the 25 um, uh, will have been discharged uh, from, from, from the hospital. Um, let me just say, as it relate to what happened last night, as far as we are aware, uh, this is, well, I'm not aware of any incident of this kind that has taken place at any one of our special events, uh, either on the county side, on the city side, pretty much in the last, I would imagine, the last 40, 40 years, where anybody has lost life. Now, we've had um, uh, uh, events where there may have been a crowd rush, or somebody had to be ejected, or maybe somebody has been injured, uh, but nothing of this magnitude that, uh, that any of us can recall, and certainly that I can recall, that is taking place in, in this city. This incident is being thoroughly investigated and reviewed, uh, thoroughly. It is important for us to ascertain from last night what took place, what happened, uh, where missteps may have occurred, uh, and in so doing, there will be, there have been conversations with, for example, representatives of Live Nation. We'll continue to talk to Travis Scott's people, We'll talk to as, as many witnesses as we can uh, who were present last night. Uh, we are talking with those, with individuals who have been hospitalized, to try to get a, full, a much better understanding of what took place, what went wrong, where were the missteps. Certainly, uh, HPD and other law enforcement organizations will be looking at, at as much of the video footage as possible uh, to try to, again, to ascertain of what took place. We'll look at the security plans themselves. Uh, we'll look at the uh, collaboration that took place between the county and the city, even leading up to this particular event. As you know, NRG is a county facility. This is where this incident occurred, uh, but it also occurred inside the city of Houston. So we'll, we'll look uh, in depth at the collaboration between, between, uh, between the two entities. Uh, in terms of personnel, and Chief Fenner can go into this even more, but let me just say preliminarily, we know that there were about 528 uh, HPD officers uh, that uh, uh, provided security uh, for the event, and an additional 755 persons uh, representing private security that, uh, that Live Nation uh, had uh, that was providing security at, at, at this particular uh, facility. So there are a lot of, let me just say to you, there are a lot of unanswered, a lot of unanswered questions. And over the next several days, several weeks, could be even longer, we'll take an in-depth look at, at everything that took place. 
uh, why it took place, uh, how we can, what steps we can do moving forward uh, to mitigate an incident of this kind from taking place uh, at any other point in time. Now, there are a lot of rumors on social media. Let me caution people not to buy into the, to the rumors, okay, because there are a lot of rumors. But nothing is left off, off the table in terms of uh, persons who were there, uh, people who may have fainted, or people who may, uh, for whatever reasons, were transported to the, to the hospital. There's a lot of uh, conversation about people who uh, crowd surge, all of those incidents, or whether or not anything else was involved. All of those things are being looked at, but it is, it is way too preliminary now to draw, to draw any conclusions, but we're not uh, taking anything off the table. This remains and will be a very active, af active uh, investigation. So with that being said, let me yield uh, now temporarily uh, to Judge Lena Hidalgo. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And to all of the law enforcement um, for, uh, professionals, first responders who have been uh, part of a swift response, thank you to them and to all the Good Samaritans because we know that it could have been much worse if so many people hadn't stepped in. The events of last night were tragic beyond belief. This is an artist that we know has a following amongst young people in particular, young people with bright futures. Those were the people that were at the event, uh, went to have a good time, and no one, no parent, no friend, no sibling should see their loved one off to a concert by a world-renowned artist and not be able to expect them to come home safely. And when we read these ages, 14, 16, 21, 21, 23, 23, 27, it just breaks your heart. Um, and I know that the images we've seen are hard to stomach, and I imagine more will surface that are hard to stomach. Since late last night, I've been on the scene. I spent time at the reunification center talking to families, um, hearing their anguish, those that didn't know where their loved ones were. Sometimes it's harder not to know. And so I appreciate everybody's work, collaboration, trying to identify everyone. Our primary focus has been to support the city of Houston, to support the Houston Police Department, the Houston Fire Department, um, as they were uh, providing the security for the event as we were uh, helping and leading the response. We have uh, been at the, the Reunification Center. Our Institute of Forensic Sciences is responsible for identifying the victims. I was in touch with the uh, Dr. Sanchez there and they are working as quickly as they can on those autopsies so that they can release the bodies to the families and, and get some answers as to ultimately the cause of, of these deaths. Throughout the morning, I and my team have also been on the phone with all of the relevant county agencies trying to untangle as much as we can about what may have led to this. Uh, the roles in particular that Live Nation, that the city of Houston, and that Harris County uh, had in any of this. It may well be that this tragedy is a result of unpredictable events, of circumstances coming together that couldn't possibly have been avoided. But until we determine that, I will ask the tough questions, and that's what I've spent the morning doing. What I know so far is that Live Nation and Astral World put together plans for this event, a security plan, a site plan that they were at the table with City of Houston and Harris County, uh, with City of Houston agencies and with Harris County's NRG Park. And so perhaps the plans were inadequate, perhaps the plans were good, but they weren't followed. Perhaps it was something else entirely. The families of those who died and everybody affected deserve answers as to what took place last night. And that's why I'm calling for an objective, independent investigation as to what went on um, and, and how it could have been prevented or how or if 
this was a particular situation that was simply out of everybody's hands. And I have directed county agencies to, as soon as we get that underway, uh, cooperate. And I expect and hope the same for everybody else involved. As you all are aware, there was a similar incident in 2019 with Astroworld. There was a breaching of barricades. Uh, there were some issues with crowd control. Actions were taken after that experience. There was stronger fencing, more and more robust barricades, more personnel and more security personnel. You guys heard the, the increase in the officers. 2019 had 47 HPD officers. Uh, 2021 had 76 Houston Police Department officers. There was an, an increase in terms of private security, an increase in terms of event security. There was additional space for crowd control. But I want to know, and the community deserves to know, if more needed to have been done. So we'll focus on objectively, objectively finding out and reporting what happened, how it could have been prevented. And the public has a role here too. If you have any information as to what took place, let us know. Let the Houston Police Department know. Uh, rumors, as the mayor said, that's not what we need. But there are some serious questions that need to be asked. So to the families, our hearts go out on behalf of Harris County. Our hearts go out to you. And, um, and, and just know that, that we won't give up on asking the tough questions about what exactly took place here. I'll, I'll repeat remarks in Spanish after everybody speaks. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Let me, let me, before you say, let me, two things that I do, I do want to acknowledge um, and offer my condolences to, to all of the families who, who lost loved ones and to those family members who uh, were injured. So I, I do want to do that, number one, I want to offer our condolences and our prayers to them. Secondly, I do want to acknowledge the quick response of the Houston Fire Department EMS unit. Uh, they had units that were already stationed um, around uh, NRG Stadium and they were able to step in immediately uh, when uh, reports of incident occurred. So to Chief Pena, to his entire team, to HFD, to EMS, I do want to acknowledge their very quick response. And then from the moment, for example, the reports were, uh, were um, made known in terms of, of people falling, uh, injured, uh, let's say roughly at about 9.30, um, uh, this event came to an end uh, at 10 minutes after 10 is when everything stopped uh, and people were in, in between either seen on the site or they were transported uh, to, to area hospitals. So um, I do want to acknowledge the very quick response, uh, EMS units, and the fact that this event did come to an end at 1010. And we do want a, a very, uh, uh, we'll be nonstop in terms of the review of this particular matter. Now, Chief of Fenner. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, good, e good evening, everyone. Um, Mayor said it. Uh, we want to send condolences to the family. Nobody, as everybody's hurting, our police department, our fire department, all our citizens, nobody's hurting more than the family members. And all prayers go out to them. And I ask the whole nation, because I know as other news media here, not just local, to pray for the family. I want to go over a few uh, things. Um, Last night, I put out some numbers in terms of security, police officers and private security. I gave the number of six, I'm sorry, 367 police officers. That number was the number that we had assigned for the evening shift. We actually had 528 because we held over day shift officers. Live Nation has just reported to us that they had 700 and 55 security officers. A lot of security out there. But as everyone is saying, we leave no stones unturned. This has not happened to us ever in Houston since I've been a police officer. And we take pride of it. And we're going to get down to the bottom. A lot of narratives out there right now. A lot of them. On social media and even last night. I think that all of us need to be respectful of the families and make sure that we follow the facts and the evidence. And that's what we're trying to do here in the Houston Police Department. I will tell you, one of the narratives was that some individual was injecting other people with drugs. 
we do have a report of a security officer, according to the medical staff that was out and treated him last night, that he was reaching over to uh, restrain or grab a citizen, and he felt a prick in his neck. When he was examined, he went unconscious. They administered Narcan. He was revived, and the medical staff did notice a prick that was similar to um, a, a, a prick that you would get if somebody's trying to inject. That is one part of it. The other thing that's very important, there were some individuals that were trampled, and we want to be respectful of that. But we just ask that y'all give us time to do a proper investigation. Live Nation has stated from the very beginning that they would cooperate. They're going to give us the video sometime this evening. I spoke to my uh, commander in homicide. So we're waiting to get that. That's going to help us. But I also want to call out to the community, kids and young individuals that was out there. If you see something, say something. This is now a criminal investigation. That's going to involve our homicide in division as well as narcotics. And we're going to get down to the bottom of it. Um, I just want to thank uh, Live Nation and everybody else out there. There was cooperation. I also want to say thanks to our police officers. A lot of them administered uh, CPR. Executive, I'm sorry, Executive Chief Larry Satterwhite was out there. And something that was important, and the mayor just said it, but I want to hit it again. 9.30, right there. That's when a few people started going down. Our people stepped up and immediately went to the, produ the producers and told them, hey, we got, people are going down. This show ended at 10.10 10 p.m. So I just want to acknowledge that. As far as arrests uh, last night, 25 arrests. 23 of those 25 were trespassing, one possession of marijuana, and one public intoxication. So we'll, we'll just uh, open it up for questions Chief. after. Um, okay. Chief Pena, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to first start by expressing my most sincere condolences to the uh, families of the victims. This is an unimaginable tragedy that they uh, are experiencing. And it's because of that that we're committed to work with our partners, the police department and everybody else involved, in ensuring that this is a, a complete and full investigation into the cause of this, uh, of this tragedy. Uh, know that the Houston Fire Department, we're going to be uh, looking into the, the permits that were issued uh, and ensuring that the plan that was submitted was adhered to uh, during the event. This is going to be part of the investigation. Uh, our commitment is to ensure that we are turning every stone, as was mentioned here earlier by the mayor, uh, to ensure that we get to the bottom of, of, of this issue. The Houston Fire Department, um, we had a very robust uh, contingency and emergency response plan. The primary medical component was delivered by a third-party uh, medical company for the venue. Uh, the security was the same. It was a third-party uh, company that was delivering the security for primarily for that venue. Uh, in spite of that, we did have units that were pre-positioned from the Houston Fire Department to ensure that we were monitoring the, uh, the progress and the event. From the time, as uh, Mayor mentioned, from the time that the incident started to escalate around 930, we requested additional resources to the scene uh, to augment those that were already pre-positioned around that venue. And this is important. Even though the plan did not require for that, we had pre-positioned units around the venue in case this, uh, this incident escalated. From the time that the uh, mass casualty incident was declared to the first unit on scene was two minutes when, when we began to make patient contact. That is an incredible response and uh, look, that, uh, that can't go unnoticed. Uh, as far as the planning, we here in the city of Houston take these events very seriously. Public safety is our primary concern. The mayor has tasked us with ensuring that we have the resources and the plans and the, and, and the, uh, uh, the contingencies ready to, for, for these events. We've done these before. Um, I believe we had a robust plan to, for, for a non-event. Uh, certainly, the, uh, the level of injuries 
the number of people in, the, in that venue uh, quickly overwhelmed the third-party vendors that were uh, that were providing the security and the and the medical component. Um, we quickly were, were able to respond. In regards to to the layout, um, there is no occupancy permit for an outdoor event. Okay, what uh, the calculation for the footprint that was going to be used for the event. If we applied the, uh, the assembly occupancy, the fire code assembly occupancy uh, formula, they could have had over 200,000 people in this venue, okay? That's just based on math. This venue was limited to 50,000 uh, in, that, in that component. Part of when we have large events, one of the things that we consider is to ensure that, that the crowds are, are subdivided. They had two separate stages in two separate areas. Uh, that was part of the plan. We had inspectors uh, to ensure that the means of egress, the doors in and out of that venue, were maintained open and unobstructed. Okay? These injuries did not occur as people would try to exit the, uh, the venue. And that was evident by the, by the fact that once the event was terminated, that event, that whole footprint was cleared out within the hour, 50,000. So the means of egress, okay, the exits, the doors were kept open, unobstructed. That was uh, our assurance. What we're looking into is what caused the crowd surge, what led to the crowd surge and, and those incidents at the point of the, of the um, um, where the concert was, was being at, the stage. So again, our, our role in this is to participate with the police department. We are gonna be looking at the films as, and, and the video as, as uh, Chief Finner mentioned. And uh, we're going to ensure that, that the items that should have been in place were in place and that we learn from, from this event. Really quick, Mayor, the permits that were issued for this were for LPG, and we had inspectors there to monitor that. We had a permit for the pyro, for the pyrotechnics. Inspectors were on scene for that. We had a permit for tents that were erected in the venue. We had inspectors for that. And we had inspectors for the permits for the means of egress, to maintain the means of egress, the doors in and out of that venue to be open and unobstructed, and we had uh, inspectors for that. Um, but again, we're going to be looking at the entire incident to ensure that, uh, that we're doing the right thing for these families. They deserve it. Uh, we owe it to them, and, uh, and we're going to participate wholly. Thank you, Mayor. Muy brevemente en español, agradecerle primero al alcalde, eh, el jefe de policías, jefe de bomberos, tantos policías y bomberos que respondieron de una manera inmediata y los buenos samaritanos. Es, 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 no cabe duda que sin buenos samaritanos, sin estos policías, la tragedia habría sido aún peor. Esta es una tragedia de escala extrema. Es un artista reconocido internacionalmente y un artista que atrae a muchísimos jóvenes. Cuando leemos las edades de los muertos, 14, 16, 21, 21, 23, 23 y 27, y un muchacho que aún no está identificado, se te parte el corazón eh, de ver que estos niños, estos jóvenes, fueron a un concierto y no regresaron. Ningún padre, ningún amigo debe de darle la despedida a su ser querido para que vaya a un concierto a divertirse y que la persona pierda la vida. Entonces es por eso que estamos tomando esto con toda la seriedad, con todo el compromiso posible. Desde anoche he estado en, en la escena principal, estuve visitando el centro de reunificación, hablando con familias. Sé que muchas veces lo más difícil es no tener, eh, no tener resultados, no saber qué ha pasado finalmente. Entonces hemos trabajado mucho por identificar las víctimas. Hemos apoyado a la ciudad, a los policías, a los bomberos con lo que necesitan. También nuestro Instituto de Ciencias Forenses está trabajando en las autopsias, está trabajando por ya poder eh, dar los, los cuerpos de, las, de los, las personas que han perdido la vida a las familias para poder seguir adelante. Toda la mañana he estado en comunicación con mi equipo, con el equipo del condado para identificar las responsabilidades en esta situación, para ver exactamente qué hizo Live Nation, qué hizo la ciudad, qué hizo el condado. 
¿Es posible que esta tragedia sea simplemente resultado de circunstancias que son fuera de nuestro control, que nadie habría podido prevenir? Pero hasta que determinemos que ese es el hecho, seguiré haciendo preguntas difíciles. Lo que sabemos hasta ahora es que Live Nation y Astro World pusieron un plan, construyeron un plan, un plan de seguridad, un plan de la sede, y en esa misma mesa de discusión estuvo presente tanto las agencias de la ciudad como eh, la entidad de NRG Park que le pertenece al condado. Entonces hay que preguntar, de repente los planes no fueron adecuados, de repente los planes fueron adecuados pero no se siguieron de la manera necesaria. Es por eso que estoy pidiendo una investigación independiente y objetiva acerca de qué sucedió, trabajaremos con eso, con identificar la entidad que lleve a cabo esta investigación y le ordenaré a las entidades del condado que participen, espero todos los demás hagan eso también. Como saben, hubo una situación similar en el 2019 con Astro World. Hubieron también temas de control de, de las masas, hubieron tam, temas de barricadas eh, que, el, que el grupo logró eh, sobrepasar. Desde ese entonces se estableció barricadas más robustas, más altas, más trabajadores, más policías, más espacio. Pero tenemos que saber y preguntarnos si hubo más que debíamos haber hecho. Entonces, el público también tiene una, una participación aquí. Les pedimos que si saben algo, si saben algo acerca de qué sucedió, que le informen al, al Departamento de Policías de la ciudad de Houston. Están llevando la investigación criminal a cabo. Y a los familiares de estas ocho víctimas eh, por parte del Condado Harris. Realmente se nos parte el corazón. Entendemos por lo que están pasando y trabajaremos hasta donde más podamos, trabajaremos por encontrar respuestas, por identificar exactamente qué falló. Those are my remarks, Mayor. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge uh, Councilmember Abby Kamen, who's the chairman of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee. Ab Councilmember Kamen is present, and Dr. Purse is also here. And again, I too want to again thank uh, HPD and all of the officers, as well as the Houston Fire, Fire Department. And then lastly, what I was saying, we'll take questions. Lastly, what I'll say is that whether an event takes place at Minute Maid or whether an event takes place at NRG Park in the county, which falls uh, within the city of Houston. We want to make sure that all of the attendees uh, are protected and with, that we give them everything that they need so that they can attend and then go home safely. Uh, so uh, having said all of that, uh, any one of us can take any questions from any of you. Yeah, one at, one at, one at a time. How many do doses of Narcan? Yeah, we don't have any. Yes, there were. Chief, you want to? Yes, ma'am. So the, the number of Narcan administrations, we don't have that number. We do know that there were several, uh, many instances where they did administer Narcan on scene. I think what, what we are saying is we are not taking anything off the table. Um, everything is on, everything will be considered, everything will be taken into account. And until we uh, get uh, look at uh, medical information, talk to those who were hospitalized, talk to witnesses, we know that North Carolina West was provided, um, we're going to take a look at everything. So, Major, one, officer, at, one, at a, one at a time. One at a what, what? Ago, we were on level red on risk for COVID-19. So, in first place, why did you guys authorize an event with thousands of people under this circumstance? Well, bear in mind, we just hosted the World Series in the city of Houston. There were a lot of people there. This was an event that was outside as well. Well, Chief, how many okay. of the 528 well, officers who are inside among the crowd? And what's the difference in the amount of officers compared to 2019? What was the reason? Uh, much more officers. I I'll get you the numbers. I don't have the exact um, assignments right now. I want everybody to realize we're not even 24 hours into it, and that's going to be part of our review and part of the investigation because we do want to know exactly what happened. But were the majority of officers or all of the officers within the crowd, or are we talking about somewhere outside? The majority of officers are going to be inside, inside the complex. Yeah, yeah. We'll give it to you. We'll, we'll get it to you.
Yes. Yeah. 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 One second. Yeah, no, you have some. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah, well, let, let one second. Now, wait, wait, hold on. No. Hold on one second now. One at a time. Well, let me, wait, let wait, me add, add something here. One at a time. One so at a time. So we have some initial numbers here, and, and, and Chief will add what he receives later. Oh, but it yeah. is in the hundreds. So in 2019, what I have is there was 409 event security, 30 armed private security, and 47 Houston Police Department officers. In 2021, excuse me, 47, 47. In 2021, 505 event security, 91 armed private security, and 76 Houston Police Department officers. As to the question on the COVID, uh, remember, our authority was stripped many months ago, and so uh, we, we can't even require masks in Texas. So, uh, yes, go ahead. Were there other reports of people feeling those needles, or was it just that security officer? Right now, we have that one, and uh, we're going to move around. I know it's a whole lot of questions. Who's next? Go ahead. Okay, so my question is, uh, whose responsibility was it to shut down the concert when a mass casualty incident was established? And then was it the promoters, the fire marshal? And then at that point, why was it not stopped sooner? There's about a 30 to 40 minute gap. You cannot just close uh, when you got 50,000 and over 50,000 individuals, okay? We have to worry about rioting, riots uh, when you have a group that that's young. I, th I think that that time that I gave you from like just a little bit after uh, 9.30 to 10 minutes after 10 to, to get that closed down, and there was a cooperation and discussion between promoters, um, our fire department, the police department, and in a, NRG officials. So I, I think that part was, was pretty good. I apologize. I didn't interrupt, but I was actually there last night. Yeah. The last song actually started at 10.10. I'm not trying to pick numbers with them, but there was quite a bit of people there. Yeah. And I think that there were people actually screaming for the numbers we'll, to stop. We'll, 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 yeah. we'll verify the numbers. Yeah. That's the numbers that, that the time I meant to say that I'm given and, and definitely in front of everybody. We want to be transparent and truthful, but uh, we'll, we'll check that, that time. But let me tell you, let me, let me finish because this is important. If it was one more songs, concert songs mostly, it's, it's, it's a minute or two. So it's not significant. I think the significant thing is that we shut it down. Thank you. Next question. Go ahead. I, I, can you step just a little bit? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm, yep. I'm, ho I'm hoping to learn a little more about the officer, the circumstances around the president himself, and how he did. I don't have that information right now. We're still trying. That was just um, interviews from an investigator of the medical staff. We're still trying to locate that um, particular uh, security officer. Okay? Chief. Okay, any people Chief. who died, what can you tell us about their deaths? Were any of them trampled, or do you believe those were drugs? We don't have all that information. Um, and, and that's something that I don't want to speculate on. It's very important. And I said I wanted to be respectful of those families. I don't want to go any deeper on that until we get some facts uh, uh, from the medical uh, autopsies and toxicology reports as well. Go ahead. Chief, we're hearing that a 10-year-old is in critical condition right now. Is that correct? Yes. That's what we have, yes. Yes. Go ahead. EMS. Yeah, so, so as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the venue, the medical component was, was being met by a private third-party contractor. Uh, they had uh, doctors on scene. They had uh, medical EMTs. They had volunteers. Uh, for a non-event, it would have been enough. But when the event started to escalate, um, we had to come in and, and augment their, their, their assistance, okay, their, their deployment. I can't say enough about uh, you know the, the men and women of the Houston Fire Department. We uh, we went ahead and pre-planned right in anticipation for a contingency. That's the reason why we had units deployed around the perimeter and were able to respond so quickly. Again, it's 50,000 people, right? Uh, for a non-event, it, it would have been gone off. Uh, it's happened in the past. Yes, we had 62 units that uh, that responded to this. We had, at some point, we had over 20 ambulances that were pre-positioned and ready to, to transport in our triage and tra treatment transport uh, or area. Um, again, you know, the, the coordination by the men and women of the Houston Fire Department on scene after the incident uh, occurred and escalated was, uh, was very robust. It was on point. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that they did. 
but uh, certainly, you know, we, we, we've been here before, okay? We, uh, it's our, we ensure that we're planning for a contingency, right? And in a non-event, again, this would have been just another normal uh, major concert. But unfortunately, you know, it escalated. That's what we're going to key in on. We're going to focus on what led that crowd to start to surge and, and what were the, uh, the uh, issues behind that. Oh, I don't. I do, but I, I don't know that number. I'll get you that number. Have you met with family members of any of the individuals who died? I'm sorry. Well, number one, we want to make sure that all of the family members were aware. Now, six of the eight family members have been notified already, uh, two, two have not. So we want to be very, very careful, very careful with that. Did you meet with any of them? I, I have not met with them. Or not at this time. No. Judge, judge. Yeah. We spoke to yes. some families yes. last night. Yes. But at, the po at that I point, we didn't many. know whether their person, you know, what. Don't what was going to be the outcome of the person they were looking for. But that is key, is the autopsies are being conducted, and so we have to wait until those results get back. Uh, what our, our forensic sciences director was saying, some of the toxicology report they can do even without the body. So they'll release that, um, and then we are still trying to identify the eighth person. We know it's, uh, you know, very, it's a male, but we don't know who it is. Um, and then there is one, another person who's been identified, but we don't know, we haven't found the family yet. So so until we have that, um, obviously we can't release all the information. What was the limit capacity for today? Like, was more people at the end of the state plan? Chief you want to respond? Yes, the I'm capacity, sorry, you said 200,000, but we limited to a point. Can you repeat your question, please? What was the capacity for today? Again, there is no outdoor uh, venue capacity. What we did is we applied the internal assembly fire code and did the calculation based on that. It's very conservative. Um, the capacity based on the footprint that was that was being going to be used, they could have had over 200,000. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that they, that's based on the math, based on the uh, assembly fire code uh, calculation, they could have theoretically had over 200,000 people, but it was limited to 50,000. And we verified that based on, on um, or, or we try to get assurance of that based on the number of ticket sales that they had. So um, again, look, it, it, was a, it, it was a wide open venue. We, uh, the plan included two separate stages to try to subdivide those crowds. Um, but again, it's the, uh, it was a crowd control at the, at the point of the, of the stage that was the issue, that caused the issue, especially as the crowd started to surge up towards the stage. So that's what we're going to be keying on in, in regards to the investigation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hold on, hold on. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is in regards to the EMS and also the private EMS that was there. Right. I know you can only comment so much, but we're being told only one defibrillator was there. I saw many EMS personnel performing CPR on, on several people right. and trying to get through the crowd. So my question is, did they have enough even life-saving drugs like Narcan and also other types of equipment to administer right then and there on site or were additional ambulances needed to come in? So let me ask you, answer your first question first. Uh, all our units are completely uh, equipped with uh, all the life safety uh, and life saving equipment. They all have defibrillators. They all have uh, AEDs at least, even the first response vehicles. So, so from our perspective, from the Houston Fire Department's uh, perspective, we had the the right uh, equipment. The I can't speak about the equipment that that the third party medical component had. I can't speak to that right now. Um, but certainly, when we responded, we responded with you know fully equipped and prepared to uh, to assist. There is always an issue with access into these crowds, especially when there is a surge. Uh, we depend on and we work collaboratively with with the HPD and the security forces that, that uh, or the security components that are there to ensure that we can gain access. But it's always an issue uh, in these large events. Let's get a few people that hadn't had the opportunity to ask any questions. Okay, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Also, what uh, the question out there have been answered, but I have this. At a certain stage, when this event had not even begun, there was a breach of barrier and security units that were set up to check the people. 
at that point, if you had those many security people on site, why then why didn't they put that into consideration and try to see how they could mitigate or that, even stop that yeah, event? Yeah, yeah. That's one question at a time, please, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Uh, look, th there are breaches. There are major breaches that shut down a, 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 a program, a concert in this thing. That wasn't a major breach to me, okay? It was something that we quickly got under control. Um, do we like any breaches? No, we don't. But that's part of the whole reviewing process and us learning some from this incident. Just as the mayor said, we, we're not going to cover up anything. We want to look at everything that we did right, but more importantly, what was done wrong. Learn from it and move forward and continue to pray for these family members. One more question. He hadn't had one. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I'll get you. Some of the concert goers have said that the, the barricades that were placed there prevented them from being able to get out quickly. I don't know if that's one of the things you're going to be looking at as to whether... That's, that's, that. that's not true, what I, what, I, what I saw people getting to get out. Um, there, there wasn't a problem with that. Um, and, 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 and let me say, we'll look at it, but I, I haven't heard that, Chief. I don't know if you have. Yeah, yeah again, you know, right now, this is still in its infancy as far as the investigation. I know that the means of egress, the doors to get in and out of that venue, were, that was not an issue. Uh, you're talking about in the, within, within, within the, uh, yeah, so we're going to look at, at that as far as the uh, design, whether the uh, design was adhered to in, in regards to the layout. Uh, to the plan that was uh, submitted. So all those things will be part of the investigation. Chief, at this point, at this point here, there, there, are, there are videos of people climbing up on stage to try to stop the artist from performing, telling the cameraman to stop. Like, are those people going to be questioned or held culpable, or can they be? Is it a matter of that time? That's, that's a part of it, and you, you know when we grab that, the video, if we see somebody that did something dangerous and, and broke the law or something, that's going to be something that we're going to address. But again, we don't get the video until sometime this evening or later on tonight. They promised us that. And once we get that and we have some time to go through it, at a later date, we will we'll update everybody. But Absolutely. Yeah. Point, go ahead. Let me, let me, let me, let me. That, let me. It's just say, it, say it again. I'm sorry. She says about the narcotics again. I think it's way too early for that. Let me just say, we know, we recognize we're not going to be able to answer everybody's questions right now. Uh, this remains a very active investigation. There are a lot of questions that still need to be answered. There are a lot of people that we need to talk to, security plans that we need to kind of thoroughly review and in detail, uh, talking with people from Live Nation, waiting on the medical reports. That will tell us a, a great deal. Uh, and at the same time, we want to be very, very sensitive uh, to the families. It's, when we're talking about in, uh, people who were 14, uh, 16, 21, 23, 27. Um, and look, that's, that's painful on any front. So we want to be very, very sensitive to that. It is important uh, for the community to know uh, that anytime you're invited to a venue, you know, it is certainly everybody's responsibility to do everything that we can uh, to keep them safe. And that's so that's what we want to thoroughly, thoroughly review. So recognize there will be a, num a number of questions. We're not going to be able to answer them all right now. But just know uh, this whole process uh, continues. Thank you all so very, very much. And pray for those who are in the hospital. And then pray for the family members who have lost loved ones. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.